All right, Zoom is saying that we're now streaming live on YouTube, so I'm going to choose to believe that. <laughs> I see you're joining us from uh, a haunted house. Yes. There you can see the moon is particularly shiny. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, at least I know you're not a werewolf. Um, yeah. I'm, glad, <laughs> I'm glad we resolved that. That's uh, true. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, see, you never know with these things. It's always important. <laughs> Um, so this week on the uh, data science club, we're going to look at random forests in MATLAB and, uh, using some, uh, analysis to select the features we want to use or in, in this tutorial, they call it predictors, uh, to use in the random forest, because just because we have 30 columns of data doesn't mean we need 30 columns of data to make a, bit, a good model. If we can trim it down to something smaller, it'll run faster and be more generalizable if we can use less features. So that'll be, that'll be good. Yeah, and in a lot of cases, even more accurate because uh, you, by selecting predictors or selecting features, you can uh, eliminate all the other noise uh, mm -hmm. which might be a lot, like if you, you might have 100 features, but most of them don't do anything, but they might just mess up your training, uh, mess up your uh, model by just being there. Uh, and like we discussed uh, in the last two or three videos, I think for the next couple or few weeks, we are going to try to do more of these videos on MATLAB and R. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is though, like we mentioned again, that uh, if you know the concept behind it, it doesn't matter what language you are using, whether you're using MATLAB, R or Python, till the time you have some idea about what, what's, the, what's the logic behind using these methods, then you should be fine. Uh, I mean, you should be able to convert this today's session from MATLAB easily to Python. If you just get the idea of why we are doing, what's the, what's select, what does selecting predictors mean and uh, how we are going about it in MATLAB. Yeah. And so um, we're gonna be looking at this select predictors for, for random forests uh, tutorial on mathworks.com. If you type that into Google plus the word MATLAB, I'm sure this pops up, but we'll put the link in uh, the description uh, here after we're done. And um, you can certainly do it, this on MATLAB on your own system, but we're gonna do it on MATLAB on Chiha. So I'm gonna go to rc.uab.edu, and then I'm gonna go to interactive apps, and then I'm gonna go to MATLAB, and I don't think we're doing anything that would need a GPU. So I'm gonna to go to it, use a CPU partition. I'll use Express. And then um, we'll set this for two hours, but it'll probably only be a half hour. We'll do four CPUs with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I'm gonna launch that. And that should launch pretty quickly. Let me refresh this. Yeah, so it's already launching. All right. And uh, if you look back in some of the videos, you'll you'll notice that we have done some random forest tutorials before, and then we've also done a feature selection in Python as well before. Uh, so those would be worthwhile taking a look at uh, if you're interested in random forest and interested in using them in more than uh, just MATLAB. All right, let me launch this desktop. Okay, I'm gonna close that out. Um, apparently I had a bunch of MATLAB scripts still up. <laughs> All right, so um, See, I'm going to do this in a new live script. That's kind of MATLAB's version of um, Jupyter Notebooks. And I'm going to make the output inline instead of um, 
out of the line. So to give us more of a feel of a Jupyter notebook. Yeah, that, and that that that, line thing. Yeah, and that way I can kind of make this part bigger so we can actually see the code and output in one spot, which is nice. All right, so the first thing that we got to do is we got to load a data set. Um, it looks like this load car big is a, uh, you, is a data set inherent inside of MATLAB. Yeah, and this data set is basically, I believe, mileage of a car compared uh, in respect to how many cylinders it has engine displacement, horsepower, and weight, and all those things. Yeah, and then it looks like the first thing that we need to do is um, clean up the data a little bit. Um, I'm gonna run this first step here. So loading this first step should bring all of this data into our workspace. It says that we're paused. Let's try stepping one more time. There we go. All right, so you can see we've got all these variables in our workspace now, mm -hmm. um, which will most likely enable the autocomplete. Yeah. So we're taking things that are categorical It's interesting that they're making model year into a categorical variable. Um, yeah. That seems a little odd, but we'll play along. I guess there's not a... Um... Yeah, I don't know what the data set looks like. It could be that uh, if nothing major changes they might be considering all of them the same model year i'm guessing i don't know what the data set looks like for this yeah well let's double to double click on that model year it says that there's 406 values there oh 70 71 72 73 okay so there's like 13 values um I suppose that makes some kind of sense because if you're trying to see which years have better gas mileage, for instance, yeah, the year isn't necessarily a value where uh, a later year necessarily implies something that an earlier year doesn't. I mean, we would like to think that gas mileage has improved over time, but it's nice. not necessarily true. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know. I, I could see some situations in which it makes sense, but it still kind of strikes me as odd. I agree. What does origin have? Um, origin is probably going to be like the um, country of origin. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to copy this. This is a big, long... Um, one, so I'm not going to try and type that out exactly. All right, so this is then making a table out of the variables that we have. So cylinders, displacement, horsepower, weight, acceleration, model year, and origin. Okay. So we'll continue that. All right, so now I think we've done all of those things yeah so we can I see, don't see an x table though that is true we don't have an x table that's odd there we go now, I now, now we got an x table yeah i thought that the run command should be enough that's just weird yeah a little, little, little strange, but that's okay. All right, so now we're gonna determine levels in our predictor. So this is like determining the number of different categories in a column. Oh wait, 
I gotta go through in through the fancy VNC copy paste. Okay. Yeah. So this is yeah, count levels. Okay, so this gives ah, okay. So the first line gives the number of elements in each different category. And then the second line gives the, just the number of levels in each category. I don't know what I'm saying. My, my words are being confused. Um, all right, so convert all variables to the categorical data type. Oh, okay, so by converting it to categorical, then MATLAB has a built-in function to determine how many different categories there are. Yeah, I, I don't know what the var fun function is though. Uh, the first one is that it is counting how many, how many elements are there, yeah, how many so categories the are there in a... The, uh, so this count levels, this is creating, this is an inline function definition. Mm -hmm. And so var fun is saying, take my count levels function that I just defined here and apply it to the data set X. Oh, okay. So yeah, oh. so that's where I was getting confused. Count levels is not doing anything until the second line after it's been defined. Okay. Interesting. Which is which is a little uh, strange, but like here, like if I um, if I do a step, oh, so gonna step from the beginning. Okay. All right. So if I do a step over this, there won't be a variable called count levels. I don't think. Mm -hmm. Oh, apparently there is, but it has. It doesn't have a value. It's got that function definition inside. Yeah. Yeah, function handle. Okay. And then now when I run that, number of levels has for each column how many different unique values there are. Okay. Let's see, let's make another section. All right. So now this next part here is just making a histogram, just showing visually that um, that num levels. Yeah, so that basically is how many unique elements are there in those um, fields, right? Or those. Uh, yeah, in, in they, they're category. already using categories for something. So uh, yeah, uh, predictor, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so so weight has the largest number of different categories. Almost every single car weighs something different. That makes yeah. sense. Um, displacement, horsepower, yeah, it makes sense there's not as much. I don't know why I have two cylinders columns. Yeah. But they have that in theirs too. So what's... When we created the table, did we have two cylinders? No. No, that's what I'm looking at. That's odd. Yeah. All right. Well, um, maybe we'll find out why that happens at some point. Um, all right. And displacement, that's like when you see on the car label, like the 4.2 liters or the 3.4 liters that's like how much uh that's like another way of measuring the size of the engine yeah like, i'm not a car buff we probably need lewis to explain that one to us <laughs> um yeah i i think you're right that's that's the number whenever you uh spec whenever you are talking about an engine there are two numbers that generally go in once the brake horsepower and the one is how how many liters is that engine? Oh, okay, yeah, and that's right. That's, you're, 
you're in the cars as well so you know that <laughs> you know that um all right so let's scroll down let's make a new section all right so now before we do anything else let's see what what this is okay so because the number of levels among the predictors vary so much using the standard cart so that would be the uh, random trees algorithm mm -hmm. uh, to select predictors can yield inaccurate predictor importance estimates so use a curvature test or interaction test. Specify the algorithm by choosing prediction selection. All right. So we're going to pull in this. So it looks like we're building a tree and MATLAB has this ability to do the prediction selection as part of a tree algorithm. So it must have some metrics built in. Mm -hmm. to specify whether or not it looks like the tree is built, being built accurately. Okay. All right. So MDL is a regression bagged ensemble method. All right, so template tree. Uh, is what t equals okay all right so is template tree a a function Oh, I know what's going on here. I have uh, a Bluetooth keyboard in another room and it looks like a baby has gotten a hold of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. All right, let's see what happens. If it... Oh, answer fit template for tree. Okay. So yeah, so it, it's built into, um, MATLAB, that's interesting. Okay. Well, that's good to know that she's not actually sleeping in that room. She's supposed to be t being a uh, being quiet for the afternoon. So, uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> she kind of gave herself away. Uh, all right. So let's see. So let's run this section, and uh, let's see what happens here. I don't think it's going to show us anything on this one. No. Because we're just built. This is like running model.dit. Yeah. So basically, it says that it's going to use all the predictor variables at each node to ensure that each tree is using the predictor variables. Uh oh. Did my uh, MATLAB session just die? Could be interesting. All right. Well, we'll we'll let that continue to refresh on the on the left side. Either I didn't request enough RAM, or we're experiencing some other issue on the cluster at the moment that we're not aware of because we're doing this. Um, yeah. Let me get out of that real quick and just try. All right, looks like I'm having trouble connecting. All right, well, we will try connecting back to that in a minute, but we'll just keep on going through this because we're, I mean, so far we've been finding all the same stuff. So this seems like it's pretty good. Interesting. All right, so MDL is not a MATLAB command, but basically it's saying, that take my table x and my 
output variable I want to predict is miles per gallon and then build a uh, random forest tree. Yeah, the number that. of learning cycles to be 200 and learners is T. I don't know what that well, is. Well, T is defined by the template tree. Oh, so, okay, okay. So that's like in Python and sklearn, we would have said from sklearn import random forest classifier. Yeah. A random forest regressor and then that's what this is pulling into saying okay yeah this is the type of tree we want to build all right so then ob predict out of bag oh okay so this is saying if i'm looking at data that's outside of my data set Oh no, I don't have a, interesting. I don't have a training data set. Um, oh, this is asking, okay, how much, how much of the variability am I uh, explaining with my model mm -hmm. on, the, on the training data set is what it looks like. And so, um, Y hat is, Okay, so this is just saying what is the Y value or the miles per gallon given my X table? And yeah. then what's, what's the R squared using this correlation function? So the model.y is the original data and Y hat is a predicted data. And it looks like this only this explains 87% of okay. what's going on. Hmm. And the next section is uh, finding out importance of each predictor, it looks like. Uh, so out of the bo out of box permuted predictor importance in that MDL uh, yeah. model that we had. Yep, so how, how much does each uh, column in our table explain the variance that we're seeing? And this is the, so figure is just open up a new plot and then bar says, okay, take in my data and make a bar graph. And then the rest of this is just formatting. Yeah, so, I'm just blanking out on that, but I think sklearn also has a very similar feature where you can uh, tell it to, once you have got it to, when, when you have start, get to, to start learning or, a model, then it can predict how much importance or how much uh, percentage of each feature it used to make the predictions. Yeah, I know. I know in the feature selection or the feature extraction one we did, we looked at like principal component analysis, mm -hmm. um, or, or independent component independent component analysis. Um, which does some of that, but you're probably right that sklearn has some of that. So we'll have to dig into that, see if there's something in sklearn that would return something like this a little bit more directly. Yeah. Because this is nice to be able to see the feature importance with the actual variable names. Yeah. That's a lot of times what you really want to know, because even doing some of those feature extraction techniques, you end up with a different version of your features that is kind of a mathematically decomposed thing, but it's not terribly easy to get at what's inside. I agree. Um, or at least not as straightforward. Okay, so basically here, it looks like the model what? year ends up being the most important variable. Yeah, this is surprising. Which yeah, a little bit, but a little bit not because I mean, I know that over time gas mileage becomes more and more important to folks. So, um, yeah, I would have still thought that horsepower and cylinders would be the most important. In yeah, miles per gallon. It is just interesting looking at it and being like, oh, model year. I mean, I agree that uh, and 
eight or yeah. twelve cylinder car in 1970s would give you less gas mileage than a twelve cylinder car today. So, yeah. but it is amazing that having a twelve cylinder, or yeah, a twelve cylinder car today, and a twelve cylinder car in you know 1970, that those numbers aren't more similar than. Because basically it's saying that if you have a six cylinder car today or a 12 cylinder car today versus a six cylinder car a while back, Mm -hmm. it's more important that your car was made today than it is the, um, the number of cylinders. But I guess that also makes me wonder, because it does say the number of cylinders matters. It also makes me wonder if there's just a smaller portion of larger cylinder vehicles at the later date as well. That is possible. I mean, uh, I know in UK, I think they banned all 12 cylinder cars. So it has to be, most of them are six cylinders now, a very few eight cylinder cars. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that would make sense. I guess that's the other reason why There's not that many categories too, though, in um, the number of cylinders. Like you have like you have like three, maybe four categories. So there's not as much there to explain the variance, but it still ends up being the second most important feature. Yeah, yeah. It's age, cylinders, and weight is the most important. So yeah, it's interesting. All right, and then here, predictor importance. So this is the same variable just as a, this is the same plot just as a line plot. Yeah. This must be, um, oh, this is showing something about, um, the uh, the mean squared error improvement that you get for adding each individual uh, element. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And so then this one here is a confusion matrix, not a confusion matrix, a correlation matrix right yeah yeah this is a correlation plot where it's showing how correlated two different things are so like we said displacement has something to do with the size of the engine so it makes sense that it would have some correlation with or a little bit higher correlation with the number of cylinders mm-hmm. um and then like horsepower and weight also have something to do with the number of cylinders if you have a bigger higher number of cylinders, it's more likely that you have higher horsepower, higher weight and higher displacement. Yeah. So that makes sense. That cylinders kind of encapsulates the variability of these other ones. Model year doesn't seem to have much correlation with anything apart from model year. Yeah. Which is also predictable because model year is independent of any of these other things. Surprisingly acceleration too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, let's see. All right. So then basically this is doing the same thing that we did previously, except instead of using the whole table to mm-hmm. predict miles per gallon, all we're using is model year and weight. And then we're building the same model. And instead of 87% accuracy, we get 86% accuracy or an R squared of 86. Yeah. So, um, um, so removing amazing. all the features, uh, I don't know, how many did we have? About 10, 12 features, right? Uh, we had one, two, three, four, five, six. We had six features and then we narrowed it down to two. Yeah, and even then we have the same accuracy. That meant that means that 
all the other features might not have been that important in getting a model running. Yep. Okay. Let's see if our MATLAB is back. Okay. I don't know what the blip blip was there. In any case, I feel like we've kind of gone through it now. So um, yeah, it doesn't make sense for us to go back through it. Um, if you guys have any questions or you run into trouble on something, especially on something that we didn't get to go through on our copy of MATLAB, um, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, this looks like a pretty straightforward thing. I think to do this on your own data, rather than doing this load car big, you would just create your own X table. And so you would have like an X and Y table that, um, that you would use. Um, so yeah, you would have make your own table for X and then you would use, um, instead of MPG, you would use whatever target variable you're interested in. So your Y. So yeah. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, Robbie. Um, I, I don't know what we're going to do next week, but it'll be something most likely either R or MATLAB, depending on what we find. And if you guys find something uh, out there and the people listening to this, if you find something that you want us to take a look at, please send it our way. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, we, have, we have been doing Python for a long time and we have had some requests for going to R and MATLAB. So that's what we'll be focusing on for the next few weeks. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, we'll uh, talk to you guys later. All right.